Hello, Mr. Marston. Why, hello. John Marston? Are, are you John Marston? I heard you killed 17 men once. John Marston is a dangerous killer. Hey, look where you're going. Trying your luck, Marston. In this town, just you look like a blackjack player. I played a handsome blackjack player. Yes. Regina says you'll marry me if I ask. I don't like it. Incredible. Simply incredible. Hello, Professor. Uh, hello, sir. Oh, Mr. Marston, sir. Good day. Good day. How are you? Well, my family's health and well-being are being threatened by some unscrupulous government agents, and my own hard-won freedom is under duress. But these problems aside, I suppose I'm fair. <laughs> yes, the problems of civilizing nomads. Uh, tell me, sir, are you from Norse stock? Not as far as I know. I was raised in an orphanage. My father was Scottish. Hmm, unfortunate. You'd make an interesting case for my theory of natural population characteristics. Really? Well, yes. A white man, obviously, but, but, but with a savage spirit. Uh, trust me, sir, I mean savage in the best possible sense. Natural nobility, but also simple, pure. I've been looking at some blood samples through my microscope, and, and you know what? No. Ah, oh, well, of course you don't. It's a remarkable breakthrough. I've been looking at the blood of both natives and white men of corresponding height, weight, and age, and you know what? Again, no. They're exactly the same. It's remarkable. It completely refutes my last book. But I'll tell you what, sir. This sabbatical in the field may have been somewhat forced upon me by circumstance, but my scholarship has benefited enormously. Would you uh, like to partake of a syringe of cocaine? I've quite enough for two. Not right this minute, no. Oh, so it's a remarkable drug. It entirely restores the ego. Uh, it takes one back to a primal state. Uh, it helps my thinking enormously. <laughs> Oh, oh, Nastas, uh, uh, come on, uh, come in, sir. Would you like to take off your slippers or, or, or skin a rabbit? <clears throat> I know we cannot see the stars, but still my heart is pure and we meet as equals. These savages must be spoken to simply in metaphors. <laughs> no, sir. I grew up on a reservation and attended school. Oh, lovely. <laughs> but I can show you what you want to see. I know where the group of bandits you seek are hiding, both of you. Vanderlyn has attracted a following of young men on the reservation. They are turning to bad things. The savage heart cannot be conventionally civilized. I was right all along. <laughs> Where's Dutch Vanderlyn based? in the hills, in Cochinay. Let's go. I know a way there that is not guarded. Uh, 
Marvelous! It's <laughs> simply marvelous. Hello, sir. Time to do our bit for humanity, Mr. Marston. Come, let's hurry. Stay close. Go. So, I understand we have a mutual interest in Mr. Vanderlind? You gonna kill him too? Kill him? Good God, no! What is it with you people out here? No, Vanderlind fascinates me. A white man living among natives. A civilized mind turned savage. It's reverse integration or regressive acculturation, Dad. Uh, I don't know. I, I haven't found a name I like yet. He was never that civilized. Ah, but of course. <laughs> Edgar Ross mentioned your unique history with the man. Although I was away with the fairies at the time, I must admit. Surfing great waves of euphoria. <sighs> well, anyway, yes, yeah, uh, some kind of Robin Hood, Oedipus, communist tale of naivete and betrayal, if I remember correctly. We ran in a game together, Professor. I wouldn't try to read too much into it. It's my job to read too much into everything, dear boy. Boating the stars. Are, are you sure this is the right way? Yes, sir. It's rather dark. Ain't you never seen trees before? I thought you were a brave cultural explorer. It's this way, mister. Good lord, no. I rarely leave my room. I explore with the mind, Mr. Marston. Enjoy it while you still can. Soon you will have cut down all of these trees. Me? Or are you making a sweeping statement about the white man in general? There is no respect for the land anymore. I'm sensing some hostility, Nastas. Some anger. Talk me through this primal emotion, where it's coming from. Don't worry about it, Professor. I see them! really have much of a head for heights. More of a, a head for highs. <laughs> well, well, anyway, I'm sure Nastas will help you. I must be on my way. I, I've got work to do. Thanks for the help. Goodbye, gentlemen. Enjoy yourselves. Let's get moving, mister. Might as well. Give me your leg. See if you can find another route, Mr. Marston. I will have a look around.
I'll be having that. There's a cave over here. Might go through or up the mountain. Yes, look at this. A mine shaft. This way! I'm hurt pretty bad. I don't think you should go any further. I'll be fine. But you go ahead. I don't want to slow you down. You sure you're all right? Just need to take it slow. Go on. I'll catch up or see you on the way down. Don't worry about me. Go look for Vanderlyn. Good luck. What have we got here? want to miss your chance. I'll be fine. You go ahead. I just need to rest a while. I would go now, mister, before somebody sees you.
tough one, ain't you? Mr. Marston? Mr. Marston! Mr. Marston! Here you go, Mr. Marston. Put that stuff away. You banged your head. Nastas and I carried you down. Mm. Uh, well, uh, Nastas uh, heard the shots and he hurried up to rescue you and he carried you down. I improvised an escape plan. 
I'm more of a planner than a man of action. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Friends of mine are with Vanderland. We must try to reason with them, sir. Vanderland's gang contains several natives. We must meet with them and try to save them from disaster. My people have already endured many disasters. Before, this was all our land. And now we have brought you civilization. Oh, sure, it hasn't been easy, but it hasn't been easy for anyone, Nastas. Why, I knew a man in Yale whose father once shot 18 natives in one afternoon out in Wyoming. Oh, the man was quite, quite traumatized. He took to lying with choir boys. For a wise man, you are a very stupid man. Mister. Gentlemen, I'm going to leave you to figure out right from wrong. You are simple-minded, sir. Thus, I do not blame you for not understanding reason. Then again. <laughs> Step to it, mister. I'm going to shoot dead in the street. Am I right? Yes, I finally got it. I finally got it. The animals are constant savages and fun. Ah, Marston, sir! It's good to see you, old bean. Good to see you. And you too, Professor. Forgive me. I am in a state of remarkable agitation, partly due to standard narcotic impulses, but also due to the fact that I have finally solved the riddle that has tormented my mind these past eight years. What's that? The nature of the savage soul! What makes some societies great, like ours, and others, uh, yeah, not worse. I would never use a pejorative such as worse, but, 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 but lesser! Meaning? Meaning. What makes these beings less human than us? Closer to beast on the continuum between animal and god! You know, I argued with Fortescue at Yale about this. It caused a minor scandal. But I shall be proven right, sir! I shall! Mark my words! I shall show them all what civilization is all about. The redskins and the nubs at Yale. Come, sir! I have a way to sate both our desires. I will bring you, Vanderlint and me, the evidence of savages reverting to type! Come, sir! Follow me! I asked the stars to bring the horses around front. Get quick, man, quick! You must seek out the shepherds and follow him. My heart's beating like a drum. Try to calm down, calm Professor. Down. I've never been so excited in all my life! Hello, Professor. Mr. Marston. Here! Devil is the start. He should be here with the horses. Where is he? Where is he? Hello, Professor. Mr. Marston. Come on. Come on. This is it. Years of research. What were you talking about back there? Where are we going? Nastas has set up a meeting. A powwow, I think they call it. A meeting of minds, of souls. Indians and whites, academics and criminals coming together to find a common understanding. Nastas, this fool's making no sense. Some of Vanderlyn's men have agreed to meet with Professor McDougal up at Bear Claw Cabin. Why the hell would they want to do that? I think they are interested to find out what conclusions a white man has reached on hundreds of years of culture and society from the comfort of his hotel room. Wonderful! Do you think I could ask for a skin sample from the soles of their feet? I don't think that's a good idea. I have to say, a touch of the old jitters. No kid. It's no small relief to have the two of you along with me. Especially you, Nastas. You really have made remarkable progress in the short time I've known you. I'm glad you have found it useful. I've always been a little afraid of sap. The bear! Shoot it! Shoot it! You've angered her. Now we have no choice. I can't 
Smoke a pipe. Hello, gentlemen. We come. In peace. Those words mean nothing coming from people like you. Look at what you've done to us. Look at us! We live like animals, scrabbling in the dirt. Well, I... Well, but I... Well, violence isn't the answer! Maybe you live in a different America than we. Men like Vanderlint will lead you to disaster. I think we've already experienced disaster. The likes which you could only imagine. Put your hands up! We come in peace! What he says, Marston? You call this a meeting? Give me your damn weaponry. This is not what we agreed to. You shut your mouth, you treacherous snake! <laughs> Holy shit! Damn it! Touch! Dutch! Professor, get down, now! They killed the stars! Marston, you have to get us out of here! Stay down and keep quiet! You're a sorry bunch of wannabe! Whatever you do, please don't leave me in here! I don't know about you, Professor, but I say we get the hell out of here. of my life. I wish I could say the same. Blackwater. Oh, I will never talk ill of you again. Civilization in all its glory, Mr. McDougal. And am I glad to be back? 
I'm in dire need of a syringe. Something to clear the mind, restore the spirit. So you ain't planning on sleeping then? Sleep? My dear boy, I'll probably never sleep again. Slow it up now. Right over that there. Sure. But like best be getting on. Goodbye now. Goodbye then. Safe and sound. Thank the Lord. So much for a meeting of minds. Thank you, Mr. Marston. I could be boiling in a pot right now if it wasn't for you. Get some rest, Professor. Mr. Marston. <laughs> Professor. Oh, it's you, dear boy. Come in, come in, and shut the door. What's going on? You leaving? Yes, sir. Yes, I am, sir. You know, you know the thing? The thing that is vital, without which scholarship cannot proceed, sir? No, I don't. I'm not having a bullet in your flipping neck, sir. I'm not cut out for this. No, I'm not cut out for this at all. <laughs> Nope. They're fucking savages! Savages! I think we all are. Not me, sir. I'm from Connecticut. I'm a professor at Yale. I write books. I do not deserve to die out here. Where's my tincture? Oh, yes. You okay, professor? Oh, dandy, sir. Just dandy. Ah, oh, great heavens above! Is that you, John? Hello, Dutch. <laughs> I think that's what they call two for the price of one out here in this wonderful place. Maybe so, Dutch. You and, and, and your friend there, the professor? We're gonna kill the both of you. Why you wanna do a thing like that? <laughs> I don't know. Sport, I guess. Fair enough. Oh. Why don't I come out there? We fight. Let the professor go and send your boys back to their families. Well, that, that sounds like a beautiful plan, John. Only problem is, my boys here, they already lost their families a long time ago. We aren't thieves, John. <laughs> We're fighting for something uh, a bit like you. Only we're fighting for an idea, not just for ourselves. That's beautiful, Dutch. You always were a fine speaker. I was. Now, would you kindly send that academic out here so we can show him what we really think about the art of anthropology? Please, sir, what are we going to do? I'm gonna hand you over to him and watch him tear you limb from limb. What? I'm just kidding. We're gonna run across the rooftops. Get you back to your ivory tower. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Don't thank me. We're still here. Come on. <laughs> Good day, sir. Uh, madam. Look here, sir. What is the meaning of this, this outrage? You two stay down and shut up. Come on. We can get to the roof this way. It's time. John! Stay back! Or the teacher gets it! As the buzzard flies! Oh, you took your sweet time! Christ alive, how many are! 
We're completely surrounded! Six. Are you supposed to be outlaws? What have you got for me? <sighs> My research is complete. Much as I thought. 
There's no civilizing this savage land. I could have told you that for nothing. Ah, but they'll give me a prize in New Haven for this. <laughs> well, they bloody better. Well, goodbye, Mr. Marston. Best of luck, dear friend. So long, Professor. So long, sir. That's what I want. Don't be a s I saw the prettiest girl the other day. The group for one more. You need a ride. Excuse me, miss. Something wrong? Does it look like something's wrong? Well, you look kind of upset about something. Perhaps you don't understand what it's like to be disgraced as a woman. To have people gossip about you and turn from you in disgust day after day. 
People can be real unkind. That's for sure. Yeah. I'm Clara. I used to be a nanny for a family here in Blackwater. The father, he was always so charming. And I, fool that I was, fell for him. Mrs. Thornton, his wife, kicked me out on the street as soon as I started showing. Mr. Thornton turned a drink. Not even a farewell. Or a dollar. I have nothing. They will surely take my baby from me. Perhaps you could find the dissolute bastard. Get even a few dollars for me and my baby to find a home. I would be so grateful, sir. I'll see what I can do. Ain't Marston, ain't it? Excuse me, madam. Excuse me. You know a girl named Clara? Is she one of the waitresses around here? No, she was a servant at your house. <laughs> the only servant we had was that wee darky girl, Sarah. And she left to join our people up north. <sighs> no, she helped raise your children. You and her had a... Intimacy of sorts. Now look here, laddie. I'm not sure what you're accusing me of. I'm just here to enjoy the tables. Not to hear expressions against my character. I understand you want to keep this quiet. Just give me a few dollars so she can set up a modest household for her and the child. You out of your mind, laddie, or are you just a common criminal? A nerve, are you? You think you can blackmail me or insult me over this piffle? You! Outside! No! If it ain't me, it's someone else. Sorry, sir.
Watch out for any suspicious activity. I jump them if you spot them. Might be good to follow that dog there. Your fear makes you sing like a fucking Don't let me catch you here again! Hey, Clara. Hello, mister. Got you some money. Oh, you are very kind, very kind. And how's Harold? How's my Harold? Didn't go so well. well. I'm afraid he's dead. Dead? <gasps> Unfortunately so. I, I, I must go to his grave. Afraid I don't know where that is. Oh, he'll be buried in the cemetery in the family plot. If I hurry, I could... I can make it to his funeral. Watch out for any suspicious activity. I jump them if you spot them. Might be good to follow that dog there. What is it, boy?
What have you got? Go get him! What a delightful thing to say. Come on, it's a pleasure to meet you. I'm nervous. I think his mother beat me for me. They said it's the Civil War down in Mexico ain't never gonna end. I hear Fill Mr. Me up, Reyes partner. won a big victory down in Mexico. Mr. Fortescue was born a woman back in Ireland. Well, if it ain't, Marston, ain't it? I'll take another one. It's the stuff of life. Why, thank you. Are ready for that your Alex yes. Davenport eradicator, so we'll strip Ryan from an anvil. Believe me, that's the next way. 